Hard Rockology show Screaming for Silence is the band. The song is called Helpless. And on the phone from the band, lead guitarist Casey Newsom. Casey, thanks for joining the Hard Rockology show. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, I just wanted to say thanks for joining the show. And uh, I know you guys got a concert coming up in about another hour, so I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. So why don't you go ahead and uh, give us a little background about the band Screaming for Silence. I know you guys have been around since 2005, so... Why don't you go ahead and give us a little background of the band and, and tell us how you got to be where you are right now. Yeah, uh, a couple of us joined in college there. We all, uh, me and Danny, the other guitarist, we played college football together. And, we, you know, we knew about each other, and we each played guitar, and we kind of just got together and started writing a few songs and started liking what we were doing. So, you know, we knew a couple guys that could could potentially be singers for us, but Dan had a... Had a really good guy in mind, and it, you know, it's Zeb, who's still our lead singer today. And so we've, uh, you know, we started off playing local show, shows around there, and you know, started to develop a really good fan base. And over about the last eight years back home, we, we you know, we've developed a great fan base and decided to to kind of branch out and start go national here. Well, you say it's starting to go national. So I know originally you guys are from the Midwest. Whereabouts in the Midwest are you guys originally from? We're we're located out of Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, so you guys started that's, off. That's home base for us. Yep. Okay, so you guys started off playing bars, local places, and all that. So how'd you guys make that leap from from that setting to to touring nationally, like you guys are right now? Uh, you know, it, it's like I said, we uh we started to develop a really good fan base back home, and we we want to make this uh, our, our career. We want to get out to as many people as possible. So, you know, last October we made the leap of, of hitting the road and ever since then we've we've driven in over or we've played in over thirty five states and have driven over ninety thousand miles. So we're doing everything playing shows every night, doing everything we can to get our music out there. So another song on your uh I guess it's an E P, right? Uh called Separate is um got some oh. great great airplay lately. Uh tell us a little bit about that and what's your reaction? So yeah, yeah, the EP is called Relentless. It, uh, our, our hit song off that, or our, 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 uh, single off that album, I'm sorry, it's called Separate. That's the one we're pushing really hard right now. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of a, just a raw in your face, you know, it's kind of, that's kind of what we take pride in. That's how we play our live shows, you know. We, we leave nothing on the stage. We give everything we have to our, our, our audience if it's one person or if it's one million people out there. Well, that being said, you got this opening EP. Is this your first release, or have you guys released anything previous to this release? We've uh, we've released a, a couple things, but we we honestly weren't happy with how they turned out. And then we we went in the, the studio for Relentless, and you know put together five songs. We or four songs. We really really take pride in, and and uh, and then we recorded that uh, that cover Eddie Money on there. So. Uh, yeah, we've we've just we've been pushing the the relentless EP for the last year and a half, and we we're actually planning on going in and recording again here in November and December, and uh, and then doing a really big push beginning of next year. So, you mentioned Eddie Money. Whose idea was it to cover that song? I mean, it's kind of an interesting song to cover. <laughs> and I do remember when Eddie originally covered the song, he didn't want to sing certain verses of the song, and he had the female singer. I forget her name. It's escaping me off the top of my head, but um. I mean, who came up with the idea to cover that song? I, I was actually sitting around one day, and I, I heard the song, so I went upstairs to grab a guitar, and was kind of playing around with it, and, you know, structured some parts in it where, you know, how we throw the breakdown in the middle of any money, or uh, of the song, and, uh, you know, I, I showed it to the guys, and I was like, you know, this could be pretty cool live, and... So we, we went through it once the way we structured it, and the, the, as soon as we were done with it, we were like, yeah, that's going in the set every night. <laughs> of course, the song we're talking about is Taking Me Home Tonight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I could see that working, right, Matt, in, in, at, at a show? I mean, these guys playing that song, I, I could it could work. I mean, you got to... Yeah, it's... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's good for, uh, it's good for you know, people, when we play out of town, for people who don't really know us, it gives them a chance to you know, like, get involved with our set and sing along with us for at least a song, you know? 
Exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and, and sometimes you just need to get that cover song in there, a song that most people out there are familiar with. And then that lures them. I guess it, bring, I guess it just brings chicks them in. Chicks love that song. Well, chicks yeah, the chicks it. love the song, and it brings them in there. And you guys bring that new metal sound to it, which, which I actually kind of like. I mean, I love when a band can take a song, especially a song like that, and make it their own, which I think you guys have done with this particular track. And it's, it's, it's a different take on the track, but... I mean, it does it. It does what you want it to do. It brings the people in there that know the song, and it makes them more familiar to what it is that you guys are doing up there on the stage. Yes, exactly. Thank you, man. Yeah. No, yeah, I, you nailed it there. <laughs> exactly, and I, I have to ask you because you guys just released this EP what last year, correct? Yep, yep. Almost a year ago to the day. Yeah. Yeah, almost a year ago, and, and I'm going to go back a little bit in time, back to 2008, when you guys actually got on the main stage at the uh, Rock the Ink Festival in, in Providence, Rhode Island. And, and just so people out there understand this, you guys were on the main stage with Godsmack, Kill Switch Engage, and all that remains. How did you guys get on the main stage without not even releasing anything yet? So that must have been quite an accomplishment for you guys. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say we got pretty lucky with that one. Uh, our, our manager at the time had, had set that up for us, and we went out there kind of with an open mind, not knowing exactly what was going to happen. And we, we show up there and they had seven stages set over, set up all over the entire arena there. We went to, you know, we, we went to the check-in office and they said, you're on the main stage, you know, on Saturday. And we're like, what? Okay. Wow. That's awesome. You know, it was amazing. The, the whole, the whole event there they had, half tattoo convention, half music festival was amazing. And all the artists they had there were some of the best in the world. And it, it couldn't have been a better thing to be a part of. Interesting name for the band, Casey, Screaming for Silence. Uh, who, who came up with that name? Uh, uh, Danny did, actually. We were living together in college in the dorms there, and when he sleeps, he sometimes wakes up and has crazy dreams, so he always keeps a notepad next to his bed with, with a pen. And one night, you know, we, we were tossing around names, trying to figure out what we really wanted to go with. One night he, he woke up and wrote something down, couldn't remember what he wrote down, so I mean, the next day he woke up and and was really excited about something, and then looked at that notebook and he wrote down "screaming for silence," and then he he presented that to the whole band, and we were like, "Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's their band name now." So we went with it and rolled with it. Interesting, interesting idea. I mean, keeping a notepad because once you wake up and write something down, you're not going to remember it the next morning. Then all of a sudden you have it yeah, written yeah. down, and it's like cool, great, kind of like yeah, with exactly. uh, with uh, what Deep Purple did with uh, "Smoke on the Water." The same thing, right, Matt? Yeah, exactly the same yep, thing. Yep, yep. <laughs> now, Casey, I got to ask, you got that unique look going for you. You got that mohawk, man. Was that something that you brought into the band, or was that something that just over time you figured, what the hell, I think the band needs a mohawk. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about that mighty fine-looking mohawk <laughs> you're sporting. Uh, that's funny. Actually, uh, when we first started as a band, Danny was the one with the mohawk. But over over the years, you know, we all kind of evolved to honor, you know, how we how we each looked. And about five years ago, I decided to cut a mohawk in, into my hair. And ever since then, it just kind of got bigger and bigger, and the sides got shorter and shorter. And now it's uh, right now it's pink and black for uh, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I'm a uh, I, I have I have people all the time, you know, ask me what product I put in it or. Or the, the occasional show when I don't put it up, there's always somebody there that's like, "Isn't there a guy in the band that has a very big mohawk?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's me." And it's like, "Oh, well, we, that's the only reason why we came tonight is to see your mohawk." It's like, "Oh, awesome, thanks." <laughs> <laughs> now you have the you have the Relentless EP, which which I heard is doing really well, and we had a chance to listen to it, and it's some great music on there. Now, have you guys been writing some new material for some maybe a, a long play album coming maybe in the future sometime? Yep, yep. We uh we're, we have new material right now as we speak that we're kind of touching up right now, and and we're uh we're going in the studio here at the end of the year, and we're we're still trying to throw together if we're going to do a, a full length EP or a full length album or another five five or six song EP, but uh we you, there's definitely new music coming your way for sure. Now I, I understand that you guys have been around, like I said, for quite some time, so I'm assuming your set consists of a lot of songs that aren't on the EP currently, on the Relentless EP. Now, are you planning mm -hmm. on, on bringing some of those songs and recording those songs, or is this uh, your next release going to be all new material? Uh, you know, we I think we might do, redo one. There, there's one we have uh, we recorded a long time ago, and we just weren't happy with how, how it came out. And 
I think we are going to try to redo one of those, and then we'll do probably another handful of, of new songs of, of all brand new material. So, Casey, what's the uh, what's the um, writing process for the band? How does that go about? Uh, what usually happens is uh, is me and Dan kind of st- uh, structure the base of of guitars on top of or guitars for the music, and then uh, I kind of have an idea of how the drums go, and I present it to Matt, our drummer, and he takes it and kind of puts his little twist on it, and then. We, we get a whole foundation for the music and then we come back in and we put lyrics on top of it. We've, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of an unorthodox way of writing music, but we, uh, it's, it kind of seems natural to us. We're, that's it's a comfortable way of writing new music for us. If I was telling somebody uh, about Screaming for Silence, I mean, how, how would I describe your band's sound? Um, I would say hard rock, uh, a, a twist of new metal in it, a twist of punk in it maybe uh you know a lot of singing some screaming uh breakdown influence a little bit but pretty much just raw in your face up tempo you know we're uh we go full steam the whole time and nothing less you know <laughs> now i know you guys have been touring now for almost a year nationally so congratulations on that i know you've done a lot of oh, touring You've done a lot of touring on the East Coast and in the Midwest. Are you planning on making it? Uh, I'm not sure if you guys made it out to the West Coast yet, or are you guys planning to make it to the West Coast? We, we're definitely planning. Uh, we haven't done it yet. We're we're planning on coming out there uh, early uh, 2014 once we get the the record all recorded and produced and everything. And uh, we're we're dying to get out to the West Coast. We like I said, we've been in 35 states, and it's all been Midwest and East and we're, we're itching to get out to the West Coast. We have a lot of friends in Arizona. We have a lot of friends in California. So, you know, it's it's we're we're getting there. We're, we can't wait to get out there. So let's go back in time just a little bit, Casey. Uh, what was like one of the first albums you bought and uh, one of your favorite guitar players growing up? Uh, well, the the first album I got was "Injustice for All" by Metallica, and once I saw the one video by Metallica. I knew that's absolutely what I wanted to do was play guitar. So about a month later, I uh, I asked my mom for a guitar for Christmas, and I got one. And I was 11 years old at the time, so I've been playing guitar for over 17 years now. Did it take a long time? To- I was. Go ahead, What's that? I said, did it take a long time for you to to pick it up, or was it just like uh, you picked it up right away with no problem? Yeah, the the first couple of years, it, it started off real slow. You know, I, I'm not a very patient person, so uh, it, it didn't happen overnight like I thought it would, but I stuck with it, and, uh, you know, I, there's always room for improvement. I'm by no means satisfied with my playing, and uh, but it, it took me some time, and, and you know, you have to stick with it or else you don't see results, you know? We need to know the favorite guitar player now. Uh, right now? Wow, or I just or, say, just or just in like, general, just in general, doesn't have to be right now. Yeah, like when you were growing up. Uh, over over the last few years, you know, I've I love like Matt Heafy and Corey Bolio from Trivium. They're two of some of the most technical, complex players I've ever seen. They they're amazing. Um, Adam D from Kill Switch Engage. His style is so unique. Like once he hits a, a pinch harmonic, you know, you can tell it's him the second he hits it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm, that's who I love. That's who I'm influenced by, I would say. Uh, As I Lay Dying is a huge fan of, or I'm a huge fan of theirs. I love all their work and everything. But, yeah, I'm into, I, for, it's amazing how my, uh, my musical taste has evolved over the last few years. It's gone to, to rock, to hard rock, to, to even post hardcore now. All right, we're going to go back a little, we're going to go back a little bit to the EP, Relentless. And, and I have to ask you, because I'm going to say this, you guys are the king of the three-minute tracks. Now, was that something that was intentional for you guys to do, or is that just the way the songs were stretched and written? <laughs> I mean, because I was looking at that, I was like, wow, each one of these tracks is about three minutes long on this thing. And part of me was kind of wishing you guys would flesh it out a little bit. So I'm going to ask, when you guys are playing live, do you flesh some of these songs out a little bit more? Uh, Yeah, there's a couple we stretch out on, uh, you know, live when we play them, but... Uh... It's funny how that worked out. That was just the way we were structuring the songs, and 
when we went through recording them, we were all like, man, all these songs are like exactly three minutes long. We, I was kind of puzzled by the whole thing myself, but this, uh, this next record is going to be a little more complex and, uh, and you know, it's going to show how much we've evolved over the last couple of years here. Now, are you playing any of the new material right now when you guys are actually doing your shows or are you guys keeping us all under lock and key? Uh, they're kind of under lock and key right now. We're, uh, planning on doing a, a pretty pretty big you know makeover after we get done with uh with recording and everything you know kind of revamp our whole set you know so, sort of our our live look and live stage and everything you know we want to get new scrims for on stage and maybe even incorporate a light show somehow but uh yeah we're planning on on you know we got it's time to do something new for us and we're excited to get in the studio and and see what everybody can come up with. So, Casey, you guys have been on the road for a lot since you've been with the band. Um, what would be something that the average fan doesn't know about life on the road for a rock band? Um, it's, you know, where we're at right now, it's not like all the glitz and glamour that everybody thinks it is for, you know, touring life on the road. We There's, there's a lot of nights we don't know where we're going to stay. There's a lot of days we don't know if we're going to have enough money to eat. We we do whatever it takes to make it to the next show and and like I said it, it's it's well it's technically not quite to the glitz and glamour yet hopefully one day but it's it's grinding it out and making shows happen that don't maybe even don't necessarily want to happen. So where can people find out about Screaming for Silence? Where can we get your music? Uh, you have a, a web page? You on Facebook? Uh, yeah, we're uh, we're all over. Uh, we're all over Facebook. We're on Reverb Nation, uh, Twitter. Uh, yeah, our website, ScreamingForSilence.com. We're we're on everything and anything that has to do with music and social media. A couple more questions, Casey. I think this one might tie into the last one. But what's like the craziest story you guys can tell us that's happened on the road so far for the band? Uh, craziest story. Oh man, there's there's been a few. I'd have to say, wow. I, it's for us like it's it's not a fun story, but for us blowing up our van on the side of the road, we we had a van die on us, a van and trailer on us in the middle of Pennsylvania, and and it it, it was just it wasn't fun, you know. We uh we had, we had to separate for a little bit. A couple guys had to stay with the trailer, and and uh. And we had to separate, but we, we happened to make it all work out. I mean, it, it was a pleasant story by any means, but it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy one. It's not fun doing stuff like that. I guess it's better to be broke down in Pennsylvania. I don't know, Matt. Maybe you can help me with this, as opposed to, like, uh, the middle of the Mojave Desert out in California. Oh, wow. Yeah, that that would be brutal. I don't know how we would handle that one. <laughs> because we actually had a guy uh, we had a guy drive in six and a half hours that we need just to pick up the trailer and he drove it back to Ohio for us to a, to a friend's house that we happened to, to be able to stay at. So we, we were fortunate enough to get out of the situation like we did. All right. One last question I have to ask is seeing some of your videos you got posted on YouTube. What exactly are you guys drinking in some of those videos? Because it seems like, <laughs> it seems like a party's going it on. It seems like there's a party going on with you guys when you guys hit the <laughs> town, man. So what's going on there, man? We, uh, we like our Jack Daniels, that's for sure. Every time we go on stage, before we go on, we all do a shot of Jack Daniels. I, and, uh, I don't know, man. Some of those videos, that, man, those things didn't look like Jack Daniels shots. They look pretty clear to uh, me, man. So what do you, what, do you, what well, else are you guys yeah. drinking? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of shots in that video. I think we were doing Jaeger, but uh, we basically stick with the, the Jack, Jaeger, and rum for, for now. Anything else gets a little too crazy, like like Jack and Jaeger and Rum's not crazy enough as it is. <laughs> All right, so when you guys make it out here, man, we'll make sure we have a bottle of Jack, Jaeger, and some rum. Yeah, exactly. Uh, awesome, man. We can't wait to get out there. We, it'll be a blast for sure. And then, we, of course, we got one last question, the most important question of the night. Spinal Tap moment so far in the band. Spinal Tap moment so far. Man, that's a tough one. I, I have no idea. I want to have to think about that one. That's a good question. <laughs> well, you, you could be like probably, some... Uh, probably uh, the band recorded with Crossfit Hill. We, uh, we had a, a night off, and we had a bartender that had some uh, some flammable booze on him, 
and uh, their uh, their tech pulled down his pants. The guy put the booze in his mouth, lit a match, spit it all over his ass, so his ass is on fire for about ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> nice tales from yeah, the road. Yeah, that was that was like a Tosh point oh type of. Uh, um, a moment there. <laughs> it's almost like a flaming cow pie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is there any video of that? No, nobody shot any video uh, of that, huh? There, there actually is. I'll make sure to get to get it online somehow, some way. I, I've seen the video a couple times. We'll make sure to get it out to you. All right, Casey. Well, Matt and I want to thank you for uh, coming on the Hard Rockology show. So. Why don't you do... Yeah, thank you for having me. Why don't you uh, introduce a, a song off your latest EP for us and take us out of the segment? Uh, the, the song's called Separate. It's our single right now. You can find it all over our, our websites and all our social media sites. And uh, if you can, spread the word and tell everybody you know. All right, thanks again, Casey. All right, here's some Screaming for Silence on the Hard Rockology Show. Separate!